hello and welcome to my ZQuest tutorial. This tutorial will be explaining the basics on how to create your own custom quest in Zelda Classic. If you don't know what Zelda Classic is, you should read up on that, find out what it is before you try using it, before watching this or trying to use the program because otherwise you'll have no idea what's going on. But that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, this tutorial is covering version 1.92 beta 183, which is a quite outdated version, but it's also one of the most stable, and the things added in later versions are mainly very complicated things that I wouldn't want to be teaching in a basic tutorial anyway. So anyway, let us begin. The first thing that you'll want to do in any quest is plan ahead. Because if you don't plan ahead, if you just make everything up on the fly, it's not good. the quest isn't going to flow well. But for the purposes of the tutorial, we can make it up as, you, as we go along, because it isn't going to be a serious quest that's meant to be played. Also, if you want, you can import different graphics instead of the, these NES ones by going to the Import Export menu. You can rip them other quests, or you can rip a tile sheet or a graphics pack or anything like that. But for now we'll be just working with an ES because simple is better in this case. So now let's go to header. Here you'll need to set all this before you start. Password, we don't need one. That's if you make the quest public and don't want people to be able to view it in the editor. Quest number should always be zero. Quest version and min version are pretty unimportant. You'll want them if you ever release a quest and then later on make lots of changes to it and you don't want people to be able to use their old, their old save files. You can manipulate those numbers. For now, leave them both as 1.0. Tile, I mean, I mean title, you can name it whatever you want. Author. Okay, then another thing to set up before well, I guess you don't have to set it up now, but it's good to our rules. The rules will affect the entire quest, and there's lots of them. I'm not going to be explaining them all, because that would take forever. A lot of them are pretty self-explanatory. If not, you can read up on them in a README or in a text-based tutorial. For now, let's just put on... I'm going to put on ones that I think would be good to have. Okay, that should be fine for now. Now, let's actually get around to making the first screen. Um, you create screens by using the combos over to the right. The combos all have different properties. You can see some of them have this pink on the left, some of them don't. The pink is for solidity. Wherever it's pink, it's solid and you can't walk on it. This is important because sometimes you'll find combos that are identical, except some are walkable and some are not. So you'll need to pay attention to that. Also, some of them will have properties like this is a cave, this is water. Those all mean different things. Uh, there's lots of different properties. I'll be going over a lot of them in the tutorial. But let's just make a simple screen to start out on. You can use replace to fill the whole screen at once the ground. Now let's just put on some walls to close off the area. You can make this however you want if you're following along. It doesn't have to be any specific way. Um, okay, then you can use these corner blocks to make it look nicer. And there is a very basic screen. Now let's put a tree in the middle, a tree cave, where you'll get the wooden sword. Say you don't want to have a green tree, though, you want it to be brown. Well, you can do that by changing C sets, which stands for color sets. Um, to do that, you use the plus and minus keys, but it has to be the ones by the numpad. So if you're on a laptop keyboard or something that doesn't have a numpad, you may have to use the FN key to switch. So anyway, there's different color sets. We'll use this one. If you want to make a full tree, like 
if all the combos are arranged like that already, you can put together the whole thing by right clicking, and then you choose the size of it like that. Then let's make the tree cave. You just let you do it like this, and then well, it's not centered, but that's okay. Uh, put on the top, and then you'll want the entrance to be a cave, so you have to pick the one that says cave. Now, I'm going to add a few other things to this just to make it a little more interesting. Let's put some trees here, some little trees, and then also an Armos. An Armos is a statue that comes to life whenever you touch it. So now, uh, as it is, the game will have no way of knowing where to start out or where the cave leads to or any of that. So now we have to set things like that. So the first thing you need to do is make a D-map. D-maps are basically like levels. They can be used for other things, like to set different properties for areas. But in the original quest, there's ten D-maps. There's one for the overworld, and there's nine for each of the nine levels. I mean, one for each. So go to D-map 1. It's on map 1. The map number is down here. You can have more than the 128 screens it gives you, of course type, let's make it an overworld, I'll explain what the different types are later. MIDI, I didn't import any custom MIDIs yet, so let's just use the standard overworld one. T music, don't have to worry about that. Color, it should be overworld, this is regarding palettes. Each level has a different palette. Level, for an overworld it should be zero. Continue here, sure. Compass, it won't need a compass because it's an overworld. The continue, continue number is the regarding the screen where you'll start out in that area, whether it's when you're starting the game or if you die where you appear. Here I had it to 77. Name, we'll just call it Overworld. DMAP title, we'll call it Hyrule Field, I guess. Uh, DMAP intro is a string that comes up when you first enter there. You don't have to do that now. Okay, so now, it knows to start you out at the screen, but how does it know where to put you? Well, it doesn't, so you have to set that by... There's an icon on this lower blue screen, and this, this blue rectangle here. You can change that by pressing page down. Um, these all do different things. This sets where to push I put items. You press escape to get out of it. The stairs you won't need very often, but I'll explain it later. The green set shows where Link appears when first arriving in the D map, so you'll need to put that on. And then blue is where to appear after you come out of a cave or a staircase. We'll want that to be in front of the cave. Um, let's see, I'm running out of time. I'm not sure if I should continue now. Okay, I guess, yeah, that, that's enough for now. Uh, the next one will explain how to create the cave itself, how to set all that data, and then we'll actually be testing it. But for now, let's just save it. Uh, I'll just save it here. And then, that's it. See you next time.